Hello dear friends and welcome to our daily prayer session. Thank you for joining us. We are meeting so we can turn the mirror of our souls at least once a day and connect with God, divine providence, so we can connect with the sunlight, with God's light, to bring it back into our own sphere and therewith we can let our light shine brighter to help others always. So thank you for joining us. And we invite you to close your eyes if you can. And let us turn this mirror of our soul and let us connect our minds and hearts with God, divine providence. And let us also connect with Jesus our guide and model and let us connect with all the mentors and with the spirit doctors and let us connect with mother mary who is so motherly and lovingly in wrapping us in her cloak of love and kindness dear god thank you for allowing us to be alive at this pivotal time on planet earth so we can boost our discernment and practice our muscles for our inner transformation and to allow us to let our light shine far and bright. And thank you for this technology and cardiac radio that allows us to connect 24 seven if we like. And with this, we ask for permission to start today's prayer gathering. And so be it. Dear friends, I want to check real quick the te technology to see whether we are live. Let's see real quick. Hoping we are. All right, yes, we are. And we're going to share this information. And then I invite you to stay connected to God. To Jesus and today we are looking towards Abigail in this beautiful book called Paul and Stephen we know that Saul did not always do the good in the general sense even though his um, crimes were linked to God in his own limited thinking he went to Damascus and on the gate at the gates of Damascus he encountered Jesus and during that encounter he decided to surrender to God's will to accept Jesus as his guide and model and the rest of his life he spent in the service for the good he had moments in his life where he collapsed mentally and emotionally thinking, experiencing so much hardship. And we feel we can relate to this because perhaps in general, but perhaps also in particular right now, we may feel very challenged with what is going on. And so we are inviting Abigail's support into our life because it was Abigail who appeared to Saul in those dark moments in spirit, and she helped him to keep going, to keep serving, to continue doing the good. So what happened? How can we boost our work in terms of spreading and growing our divine virtues with the help of Abigail? Well, the first advice Abigail gave to soul and of course to us and that is love everything and everybody friends we're invited to love everything and everybody god love god above all else and your neighbors as yourself this is what jesus asked us to do so let us love god above all else let us connect with this immutable eternal love that love that never goes away, 
surrounds us, imbues us, wraps us in, enwraps us, always there to help and to support. And when we really connect with God's love, how can we not love our neighbors? Because our neighbors, and including ourselves, we are children of the same God. We're all in this together. And we're all caught at a certain moment on this timeline of our inner transformation. And that includes our enemies, those we have a hard time with. They too deserve our love. And by giving, we receive always, right friends? Love above all else is understanding. It is affection. It is communion and trust. It is an expression of the soul that can endure without material commitments. Right now on earth, we need to learn to do without our material connections. Some of us are alone or we're just staying together with our family members. So it is a new time for us to learn to connect in spirit with our minds, with our hearts. And of course, we still have help of modern technology. When we go into nature, we see love everywhere. Divine providence provides for everything with patience and surrender. We find love in the affinity of the planets, for example, or in the affinity of chemical elements. Love is everywhere. And of course, the affinity between us souls. So, but soul and we find it difficult, don't we? We find it difficult to love everything and everybody. So what can we do for our souls to reach such an elevated state? Abigail had the answer for us in soul. She said, work, work always. What is work? Work is any useful activity. So whatever we do, as long as we're working for the good, is work. Work is a natural concentration before any useful enterprise. It is a form of prayer that we create before we take on any enterprise. We focus. It is our divine prayer. We can pray through work, through doing the good. It keeps us on the straight and narrow. It keeps us focused on love. Work is vital for our inner progress. Working for God boosts our courage and creates joy. Work needs to be without recompense, without any expectations, because we know we work for God. And working for God, we will always receive back. There is no, never any shortage of love. Do we share our time these days? Most of us have extra time. Neo Lucio calls it the divine talisman in his book, Jesus in the Home. Are we generous with our time, with our creativity? Are we working in that regard as well? This is part of our invitation. So what measures can we adopt against heartbreaking bewilderment and destructive discouragement? Because sometimes we feel our work is not doing any, making any difference. We feel discouraged. Abigail had the answer for us. She said, hope in the future. Never give up hope, friends. Never give up hope, soul, she said. Hope is the divine spark of progress. Hope always is linked to faith. If we have faith in God, we can't other than be hopeful. The law of progress helps us to understand that nothing is ever fixed in this universe except for God. Everything is in movement and this too shall pass. The law of progress will propel us, will help us to get through this as long as we are making good use of our time and we're following Abigail's recommendation to love everything and everybody, to work always, 
and to never give up hope. How can we keep up hope amongst everything that's going on in the world, we're asking, when we fail to see improvements, when we listen to the news, when we be get criticized, when we don't feel respected or recognized, when we observe ignorance being displayed in the world, how can we keep up our hope that this too shall pass? Abigail had the answer for us. She said, forgive, forgive the incomprehension of others. Always forgive. Jesus told us to forgive 70 times, seven times, meaning to always forgive. We can never forgive enough. Forgiveness is the most pleasing situation for God. It is the most pleasing thing for God, which makes it most pleasing for our own selves. It is healthy for us to forgive. It boosts our heart strings. It opens our hearts. It's a sacrifice. And it is the sacrifice for God, the ultimate sacrifice. God forgives our debts to the degree that we forgive others' debts. Let us remember, friends, when we are faced with the incomprehension of others, when we believe we see ignorance in the world, when we are teetering on giving up hope, that we are guilty too. So let us forgive. Let us forgive everything and everyone. It was Jesus' ultimate lesson on the cross. He, caught between two common thieves on the cross, prayed to God and said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And that includes us. Dear friends, you're invited to close your eyes again if you can. And let us with so much gratitude thank God for all the gifts we have received and are receiving continuously. We're asking God to help us see the gifts we have so that we can share them, share them every single day to help others, to do our work, to be useful, to boost our own hope and those of those around us. So we can love more, not less. And that we always forgive. Forgive every single person in our lives, the ones we know and the ones we do not know. Thank you, God, for giving us our minds so we can do the work you ask us to do. Thank you for giving us these hands to be of service in the way you want us to be of service. And thank you, thank you for our feet so we can work and move and be of service. Waking up in the morning, making God's to-do list so we can seek the good, feel the good and visualize the good and mold the good with all the resources we have to help ourselves, our neighbors, and this planet to transition, to regenerate. And with this and so much gratitude, we're closing today's prayer gathering. And so be it, dear friends. Thank you so much for joining. And please tune in tomorrow at the same time for the daily prayers. God bless you.